Hello guys, this is the continuation of our series of public economics and this is the unit 1. In this video, we will cover efficiency and Pareto optimality. So what is the welfare efficiency and Pareto optimality? This is given by welfare theorems, the famous welfare theorem 1 and 2. So what is welfare theorem 1 says? Uh, it says that in a competitive market economy which allows free trading, among individuals, any mutually beneficial trading will result in efficient distribution of resources. So, what are the assumptions this theorem is making? First is the competitive market. Okay, you know what is competitive market. Buyers and sellers both are price takers. And there is the free trading. Free trading not only means the no transaction cost, not in terms of monetary, money is supposed near. But there is also um, in terms of efforts you are making to find the mutual uh, partner and you look for the partner who is ready to uh, do trade with you. So efforts should be minimum or zero that is the external cost should be zero. Free trading among individuals and mutually beneficial. What it means by mutually beneficial? It means that uh, the trade should be not, there should be no case of asymmetric information. You know, it's not like one party has more information compared to the other and this will cause one party to lose his welfare. So there should be no case of asymmetric information. Both parties should have equal information regarding that trade. In that case, result will be an efficient distribution of resources automatically. The economy will automatically distribute the resources in an efficient manner. If these all conditions are satisfied, three conditions, mark, competitive market, free trading and mutually beneficial. So we will see the Edgeworth Bowley box, how one reaches at the Pareto optimal points. This is a simple rectangle type of box. At this edge, this is the user A and on this edge is the user B. On the horizontal axis, there is the quantity of good one. On this axis, quantity of good one. On vertical axis, this is the quantity of good two. The quantity of good two. So suppose uh, here is a point E. At this point, this quantity this quantity this means this this much quantity belongs to the user a of good one quantity and remaining quantity which is the remaining quantity this much this much this much quantity belongs to the user b for the good one and similarly uh, on the vertical axis this much quantity this is up to this level this much quantity of good two belongs to user a and the remaining quantity this much this much quantity this much quantity belongs of good to belongs to user b so this is the uh, this is how we, we show the quantity available to user a and b and then there is this is the indifference curve for user a then this then uh, another indifference curve so these are all indifference curve for user a and this is these are the indifference curve of user b this is the indifference curve of user b b and then is the B. So wherever uh, user A and B's indifference curves are tangent to each other, those points are Pareto optimal points. When all these points, when they meet, all these points uh, make a curve. This curve is called the contract curve. Contract curve. On this contract curve, all Pareto optimal points are lying. Pareto optimal means uh, there is no further Pareto efficient move we can make because they are on the tangent and they are getting the maximum utility as their indifference curves are tangent to each other. So on these all period optimal points or the contract curve, this satisfy the equality. That means the marginal rate of substitution for A for the good one two is equal to marginal rate of substitution of B for the good one two. And this is equal to the price ratio of the good one and two in the market uh, but there comes a problem because on the contract curve there are infinite numbers of uh, Pareto optimal points are there so which point is the best among all these optimal points for the society so answer lies in the welfare theorem 2 
and the utility possibility frontier so what is possibility utility possibility frontier it's just a, this diagram is the you see ut, this diagram is the utility possibility frontier upf so on the x axis is the utility of b and on y axis is the utility of a so welfare theorem 2 says that uh, in a competitive market economy given that individual indifference curves are satisfying standard properties then whatever is the initial distribution of goods among the individuals any point on the utility possibility frontier on this curve is a point of equilibrium so what it says actually if the whatever is the initial distribution but if the point is on this curve this curve is the utility possibility frontier like the maximum possible maximum possible utility a society can derive through the re available resources every point on this utility is the maximum society can derive through the available resources shape of this curve is concave so there is a trade-off between utility a and utility of b if we increase the utility of a we have to decrease the utility of we have to reduce the utility of b so suppose the initial endowment is 8.a so whatever is the based on social judgments we can move that point on this curve either b d or c if we if the social judgment is like u a should be equal to u b both we are giving equal weightage then both the user should have equal utility then we need to move this point to a point d where both will get user a and b will get equal utility otherwise if we want user a to greater than user b then we will move it to point b and uh, in the reverse case we will move it to point c so this is the utility possibility frontier so welfare theorem 2 says whatever is the initial uh, distribution of income uh, if government wants then policy induced redistribution can bring the desired period optimal situations like government can make a policy of redistribution and we can bring the this point on the period optimality level okay guys see you in the next video bye